Hey everyone, my name is Arthur Jacobs and I'm here today to present to you our work entitled, Hey Lumi, Using Natural Language for Intent-Based Network Management. So the issue I want to talk to you about is an age problem in networking. That is, deploying network policies is hard. And while there are many reasons why it is a hard task, uh, there is one issue in particular that I want to focus with you today. While we generally describe the network behavior to fulfill a policy in natural language, such as block YouTube in the office, inspect all traffic for the dorms, or rate limit employee streaming traffic, it's usually left for operators the job of breaking down those high-level intents into actual configuration and deploy them. And to do that, an operator might use vendor-specific command line interfaces or even higher-level abstractions such as SDN or OpenConfig. But that is still a very hard job to do and very error prone. And because of that, several even higher levels of abstractions have been proposed, such as network programming languages and visual interfaces that allow operators to configure the network. Well, the question we pose in our work is, what if we take this a step further? What if we use natural language to actually configure the network? We already rely on natural language extensively to document network policies or even document code and configuration files. So what would it take for an operator to act to be able to tell the network what to do? Well, to answer that question, we propose Lumi. Lumi is a conversational assistant that allows network operators to express their high level intents in natural language and automatically breaks them down into low level configuration. Because of the inherent ambiguity of natural language, to avoid making any mistakes, Lumi relies on a high level intent language to structure intents and ask for confirmation and feedback before making any changes in the network. Most important of all, Lumi actually learns from the provided feedback from operators to make less mistakes over time. And to evaluate Lumi, we focus on a campus network use case using real world intents extracted from network policies from US universities websites in a user study. So the initial design of Lumi supports four supports intents of four policy types. ACL, such as allowing and blocking specific types of traffic for users and endpoints. QoS, mainly usage quotas and rate limiting. Middle box chaining, that is actually forward specific traffic through existing middle boxes in the topology and temporal behavior for any of the previous policy types. Very few other works attempted to apply natural language in networking tasks. For example, net to text lets operator query the network using natural language fragments, but doesn't support any configuration operation. And another work entitled, Hey Network, Can You Understand Me? allows simple network configuration commands using natural language but relies on a brute force approach to matching entities in the input texts and doesn't support any confirmation or feedback to learn over time. In turn, Lumi allows operators to use natural language freely to express their intents and is able to learn through feedback to over time. So to go into a bit of detail of how Lumi is designed and implemented, let's focus on this one specific example. Let's say a campus network one a campus network operator wants to use Lumi to deploy a very simple intent, spec traffic for the dorm. Lumi would take that in, intent as input and use a pipeline of modules to turn it into network configuration. The first module is called information extraction and is responsible for actually detecting and tagging the relevant entities from the unstructured text. For this example, Lumi would extract two tagged entities, a DPI middle box and a dorm target. So to implement this module, we rely on a technique from natural language processing called named entity recognition or NUR. NUR usually involves some machine learning or prob probabilistic method to tag the unstructured text. And for Lumi specifically, we rely on a BioLSTM architecture to build a dictionary of tagged entities at the end. Having extracted the relevant entities, we then have to build a structured and well-formed intent using some intent language that can act as an abstraction layer between natural language and low-level configurations. This abstraction layer must be both expressive enough to accommodate all feature Lumi supports and high-level enough so that operators can easily parse and understand the intent without having knowledge of the language grammar. And to that end, we propose in this paper the Nile language. 
Nile was designed to closely, closely resemble natural language, and because of that, it's very easy to read. And at the same time, it is expressive enough to support many different types of intents, providing some necessary structure to compile them into a natural configuration later on. Even more complex intents, such as add, an, add, add viral and intrusion detection from gateway to backend for client B with at least 100 Mbps of bandwidth and allow HTTPS only, can be easily written in IO without loss of legibility. So after building an intent with the extracted information, we must then ask for confirmation from the network operator. Since information extraction relies on machine learning, it's possible, however big the training data set is, that some entities might go untagged from the input text. And it's unfeasible to account for every possible way a network intent can be stated in natural language. So to circumvent that issue, we leverage the network operator knowledge to confirm and provide feedback on built intents so that Lumi can learn how to better extract fe features over time, as shown in this conversation example. After every feedback we given, we retrain the NER model if at the added key value pairs provided by the operator through the chatbot interface. And after confirming the intent, we can finally compile it into natural configuration. So for our initial design of Lumi, we were pragmatic in choosing as target the network programming language that had the biggest overlap of features with Nile, and that is Merlin. However, Merlin doesn't support temporal policies and usage quotas, so we had to implement those features from scratch. At this last stage, we also have to resolve keywords from Nile intents, such as dorm, into actual IP addresses, subnets, VLAN IDs, using topology information that is provided to Lumi. For more details in the, in the Lumi architecture that I don't have time to go into, I'll refer you to the paper to read. So to evaluate Lumi as a viable alternative to network configuration, first you need to assess how accurate Lumi is in extracting information. The biggest challenge in, in evaluating a system like Lumi is the general lack of data and tech data in particular. So we went to great lengths to produce two data sets of tagged natural language intents that we use to evaluate Lumi. The alpha data set, which is comprised of 150 synthetic and hand annotated Lumi supported intents. And the Campy data set, which consists of 50 natural language intents extracted by manually crawling through the public network policies of 50 US university websites. However, not every university website had explicit and public network policies. We made an effort to parse intents from university websites without making changes to the text, which resulted in, in, in intents very different from direct commands that, such as the ones in the alpha data set. And these examples from Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon University that state, no individual service or, or system running on the wired or wireless network should use more than 10 gigabytes of bandwidth per day, regardless of whether it's inbound or outbound over the commodity network link. Or the Columbia University example that says, quotas for students are 5,000 megabyte per hour download and 2,000 megabyte per hour upload, illustrate that structure very well. So, we use a 75-25% train test split to evaluate Lumi using both data sets alone and combined and using traditional precision and recall metrics, which values are better to, to uh, which values are better the closer to one they are. As shown in the table, overall precision and recall are very high, well within an acceptable range. And the campus data set in particular had a small, slightly smaller recall which we attributed to the unstructured nature of the text extracted from university websites. But as you can see, with proper training, Lumi can accurately parse entities from input intents. We also analyzed how much the feedback provided by operators help in training and how often it is needed. To simulate feedback loops, we combined both data sets uh, with, we combine both data sets, training Lumi with 75% of cases and using the remaining 25% of cases as individual tests. If any of the tests have any false positives or false negatives, that is in case Lumi mistags an entity, 
we add that test case to the training data set and retrain Lumi from scratch before testing the next before the next round of testing. To analyze how often feedback was required, we repeated this experiment 30 times and with different training, training and testing splits. We expected to hear, see here in the result a trend in precision recall stabilizing in one as more feedbacks are given, which, which was confirmed. For the first experiment, only eight in the 50 cases of feedback, uh, only eight in the, of the 50 cases or test cases, any feedback was necessary and the feedbacks became more sporadic with each test case. On average, only 10 out of the 50 test cases were used as, as, as feedback. So we can see that feedback helps Lumi learn over time, but it is seldom necessary. So finally, to assess how Lumi would fare when presented with unforeseen test cases, we ran a small scale user study, completely anonymous and online, where participants were asked to complete uh, five tasks using Lumage to manage a campus network, such as throttling some traffic in specific times or specifying usage quota for certain groups. We had 26 participants from four different continents with different levels of, of expertise in network management from novices to experts and even some network camp, campus network operators participated. Most participants managed to complete four to five tasks. However, we noticed from the results that Lumi had some trouble parsing time ranges, which prevented some people from completing the last task. We also analyzed how the feedback mechanism was required, how, the fee, how often the feedback mechanism was required for people to complete the tasks. In roughly 90% of cases, no feedback was required. And in the 10% of cases, the feedback was required. Close to 6% of times it was helpful in, in completing the given tasks. So in summary, we believe Lumi is an important step towards using natural language for network management as it provides an end-to-end -end system to deploy natural language intents. Lumi also leverages the Nile language as an abstraction layer, which allows to easily confirm intents with operators and learn through the provided feedback to make less mistakes over time. Lumi, uh, we also realized that there are some key challenges that still need to be addressed. For instance, Lumi requires some proper safeguarding, such as conflict detection for to be production ready as well as support for other features to make Lumi more useful for, for other use case scenarios. Finally, to encourage reproducibility, we made all research artifacts, code, data set, and user study results available through Lumi's website shown here in the screen. So thank you very much and feel free to email me with any questions.